All right, this person here says, Lance, why is NXT failed to turn out main event stars for WWE when OVW is almost a can't-miss turning out Cena, Angle, Lesnar, Batista, Orton, etc.? Yeah. I, before you started listing the names, I was going to say, well, it's because I was training in OVW. That's why. <laughs> but uh, when they, you know, produced Eminem and Bobby Lashley and uh, Dolph Ziggler and uh, Mickey James and uh, a bunch of others as well, Melina, she, well, she was Eminem. But, well, I, I think there's a, a lot of different reasons. But the thing is, too, I'm, you know, I'm just off my head here. It's like, you're, you know, they did create Charlotte. They did create Baron Corbin. I know, like, fans want to dump on Baron Corbin, but he is a main event successful guy in WWE. So there's been people, and again, those were two that I believe were from scratch. Well, I think but, they were naming, like, John Cena and Batista and Kurt Angle. I'm not sure that Baron Corbin well, necessarily yes, is going to fall into that. Uh... But if you want to play devil's advocate here, it's like... John Cena was technically not a success coming out of OVW. The ruthless aggression John Cena did not really catch on. There was actually a point where they were going to cut him. There's the story that was told that, you know, uh, Steph heard him, you know, what's the word, you know, battle rapping, free rapping, whatever the hell uh, you call it, uh, on the bus and gave life to the, you know, word life John Cena that caught on. And and Dave Batista when he's called was called up and again Dave Batista will be the first one to tell you he didn't like his time in OVW and again I'm not saying OVW didn't work I'm just saying that you can look at both places any way you want but when Dave Batista came up he wasn't particularly successful and it took him a while to you know, again work with Ric Flair and J Chris Jericho and you know Hunter and so forth to find his groove and get over and I think that is part of it in that. Back in 05, 06, 07, when, you know, the talent was coming from OVW, there was, maybe it was because they had a smaller crew of developmental talent that they were more picky in their scouting. They were more specific in their training, but they also stuck with it more on the, the main roster to get value out of it. Because if you've only got 15 people in developmental and you're bringing up this John Cena kid that you've paid for the last two years in developmental, it's like, we want to get our money out of him. And there's not a long list of other guys sitting in OVW, so it's like, well, we better make some efforts here. And they took several efforts and a longer period of time for him to catch on. And perhaps, purely speculation, that when you've got 120 bodies in developmental and you pick a guy you know you bring them up and it's like it doesn't really hit right away it's like ah find me another one because there's a bunch of them and perhaps that is part of it or maybe they were just more stick to it back then that uh you know you you stayed with it longer because you know dave batista took a while i you know i've told the story and it's you have to listen it to the end or it seems like a burial of batista but it's not i've got a lot of respect for batista there was a period where on house shows and I'm at the monitor. It's when they, you know, they brought up like Horseshoe and Batista and a bunch of, you know, of John Heidenreich, large guys that weren't at the time particularly good. And something was going on in the ring and it was just, you know, it was rotten. And I'm watching on the monitor backstage with Arn. And Arn's like, oh, God damn, all you need is a set of traps and some baby oil to get a push around here. And I laughed and Arn laughed and I heard someone laughing behind me and I turn around and it's Batista. And I'm like, wow. And the next day at TV, Big Dave pulls me aside and he's like, yesterday with Arn. I'm like, yeah. He's like, the baby oil and the traps comment. I'm like, yes. He's like, I'm one of those guys, aren't I? I just looked at him like, yes, Dave. Yes, you are. And a year later, he wasn't one of those guys. And that's where it becomes a testament to Dave Batista because he realized he wasn't where he needed to be. He realized he was a guy that was there because of the way he looked. And he didn't want to be there as the guy that was just there because of the way he looked. And he busted his ass for a period of time. I don't know if it was a year, 18, whatever the hell it was. And he became a really good worker and had, you know, phenomenal programs with, you know, Taker in particular. Uh, had great matches. So it's, I think it's a case of... <clears throat> They stuck with guys longer and made better efforts. 
If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.